So yeah, welcome everyone to Glasgow's Greenwash, uh, the event put on by by SANE covering the release of our latest report, Glasgow's Greenwash. Um, I'm going to very quickly pop a link into the chat that's just got our kind of SANE uh, safe and inclusive participation in online events guidelines and uh, for you to check those out and again just pop anything in the chat if there's anything that we can do uh, to make tonight's experience any better for you. Um, I think that's probably all for me. Um, obviously, we all hope that you have read the report in advance of coming, but if not, don't worry, we're going to be covering uh, the beginning of it and uh, sorry, a, a summary of it. And I'm going to pop a link into the chat as well for you to access that. And I think we can go on to the next slide. Cool. So we're going to begin with um, just a quick go around where we can all say our names um, and just if there's an organisation or a campaign that we are here to represent, you can give us that information as well, but just so we can all uh, hear one another's voices. And then Mark's going to take us through um, the summary of the report and a bit of context surrounding um, how the report came about and how it's been received. We're then going to hear from a couple of guest speakers um, and watch a video from one of the campaigns that's featured in the report. And then we're going to go into some breakout rooms to talk a little bit closer about how we can build momentum, build future work around the report and then come back together um, to kind of discuss those plans and and share some ideas about that, about the report. Um, so I'm going to pop those links into the chat now and I wonder whether we can um, each just go around and, uh, and say our names and maybe pass on to, to the next person. Um, so the first person, so oh, I should say, uh, I'm Iona, uh, I work with the SANE Collective um, and yeah, have been involved with helping to put this report together. And the first person on my screen that I'll pass on to is Karen Bell. Hi, um, I'm Karen, I'm um, working at the University of Glasgow for about the last month. I've just moved up from Bristol and we have a similar kind of situation with we were nominated Green Capital, even though we've got some of the most appalling environmental conditions on the outer estates <laughs> that were completely ignored. Um, so that's why I'm interested and it links to stuff that I study as well. Thank you. Can we pass it on to uh, um, Justine? This is where you always pick someone who's just nipped away for a cup of coffee. No, no, so, yeah, I just had to change rooms because uh, my partner was just starting the, um, the kettle and it was really noisy. So, <laughs> oh no, this is the worst time. Anyway, uh, so hi, my name is Justine. Um, yeah, I've just, I, I work at the University of Glasgow. I actually met Karen uh, recently. We're in the same department. Um, and I also uh, got involved with uh, saying on the People's Assembly work maybe uh, last November. Uh, so that, that's sort of the, my background, I guess. And now we pass on to, who, who can I see on the, on the screen? Barry. Uh, hi there, I'm Barry. I've been involved with the same collective since the beginning. I'm also involved uh, with environmental organisations as well, such as Friends of the Earth. Um, so, yeah, looking forward to the discussion. So uh, I'll pass on to Bobby Jewell. Yeah, thanks, Barry. Um, <clears throat> uh, so, yeah, my name is Bobby Jewell. I'm representing a group called Architects Climate Action Network. And we are a grassroots organization of professionals in the built environment industry, looking to change how buildings operate, how the construction industry works, um, and effectively hoping to affect all of the built environment industry as a whole. Um, I was invited here today by Mark, and because we're very pleased to see that our regulate embodied carbon report from last year was referenced in the uh, report by Ben Rye. Um, so yeah, thanks for inviting us. So come down and say hello. Um, Mark, did you want to pick someone <laughs> to speak next? Um, you know, if, 
Is the Sue, do you want to say hi? Yes, hi everybody. I can't actually see any faces, so I don't know if anybody can see me. Um, but I'm Sue Rocklin and I'm also a member of SANE and have been involved in um, getting the report produced. I can't see who else is there, so uh, Mark, you'll have to move, move off to somebody else. Somewhat disconcertingly, Sue, what we can see is a, a side of a cardboard box. Oh. But yeah, uh, <laughs> so, so it's your camera playing tricks again, but it's, it's, it's it provides some light, light, light of amusement. Um, is that better? <laughs> yes, excellent, fantastic. Brilliant. Okay. Thank you so know. much. Sorry about um, that, folks. Neil Lovelock from the Glasgow Eco Trust is doing some DIY. Uh, multitasking as we have to do in these ne neoliberal times. So um, I, I, he, if he if he can pause from hammering for a moment, he can maybe join us. But um, I'll pass on to Sandra. Um, I'm not sure I can't see myself, but my video started. So I'm just that. So my name is uh, Sandra Hüttenbürger. I'm associated also with the Parents for Future. So Sam Bartlett told me about this and yeah, I'm just interested. And I think it's just interesting to see what's happening in your own city. So yeah, I'm quite, quite interested to just get some more info today. Fantastic, Sandra, thanks so much. Zarina, yeah, you seem to have yeah, had a child and then put a child away. And so are you, are you ready to yeah. say hi? Yes, yeah, um, sorry about that, I was, um babysitting kind of babysitting and um, so um yeah so hi everybody I'm Serena I am I've been involved with Zane for a number of years now on and off and um, I'm really interested in looking like at things like intersectionality especially around um gender and race um, and that's why I'm here thank you so much I, I think that's everybody um other than perhaps myself who is a uh, You'll be tired of hearing my voice soon. So, but I'm basically been involved with with seeing a uh, for some time, and uh, I, I work at the University of West of Scotland, uh, teaching uh, community education, um, but uh, involved in a, a range of different organisations, and uh, a part of the group that you know put the report together. And I'm just going to speak through a youth. Do you want to run through the rest of the, the session, Iona, before you bring me in? No, uh, we're quite we're uh, getting on quite well, so let's let's crack on uh, with with the introduction. Great, excellent. Okay, just to let everyone know. Um, I'm just going to run you through. So, for those of you who have not managed to digest, which is a pretty big report, I'll look at the, the kind of highlights, and then we're going to bring a uh, Zarina in. Um, for an input and then ask Sam to come in from Parents of the Future um, and after those kind of inputs then we'll break into a couple of um, breakout rooms I think and they uh, go through the, through the questions. So Iona's been kind enough to develop this brilliant presentation for me. Um, so before I start we, we just wanted to kind of um, we're trying to create a sort of democratic environment, of a, a, an environment for for discussion, which excuse the kind of usual culture of, of political kind of point scoring and um, uh, uh, and pettiness. Uh, but also we're looking to embed a lot of the values that we really think need, are important coming uh, going forward. So we also want to um, recognise, especially when we're talking about this subject of of greenwash and climate justice that we are speaking from from Glasgow which you know in a uh, was known as the second city of the empire and, and certainly um, has been responsible for a great deal of the carbon emissions um, that are now damaging the planet so significantly and also have a history of of certain elements of the city benefiting from the international slave trade as well as other forms of colonial oppression. So with that uh, acknowledgement, um, I'll just bring you into this quick review of the report. So it was begun in September 21 and finalised, uh, we finalised in February this year. We've sent it to all the city councillors before the 
before the powder and before we can split up. Um, we actually signed it on the 100th day since the, uh, the end of COP26. Um, we had one response uh, from Councillor Graham Campbell, who I hope was going to be along tonight, but hasn't been able to make it. Um, so we, we also sent, sent it to MPs and MSPs. Um, so unfortunately, despite the fact that, you know, you'll hear politicians, you know, say how interested they are in the, in the civic society being engaged with politics. Given the amount of effort uh, we put into this to have no responses at all, I think kind of shows you how interested they are in, in people um, actually critiquing the kind of um, policies that they have. So our meeting today is to, uh, is to discuss how we take the findings of this report forward and always we're saying it's about how do we work with others to amplify the work that other people are doing and we've we have invited a lot, a lot of people who weren't able to make it tonight from like the Divest, Strathclyde and a range of different other organisations but it's the, the nature of the activist world where we're all very busy so very grateful for those of you taking the time to attend tonight. So just to kind of again try and look at the 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 main um, the kind of headline issue, issues that we identified within the report. Um, this idea of net zero carbon is, is something that we you know we start off with a critique of that anyway the, the whole concept of net zero and carbon offsetting yeah, is is hugely problematic. Um, and there are many different organisations that uh, across the world we see this just essentially that COP26 was a way to financialise the end of the world, a way to just carry on as business as usual with giving some kind of potential of, of action and uh, as, as Greta Thunberg famously put it, blah, blah, blah. So we feel that despite a, 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 what looks like a huge amount of action uh, from Glasgow, it actually amounts to pretty much blah, blah, blah. Um, the, the, the thing about targets and, first of all, setting targets that are, are meaningless because they don't actually engage with the key issues, but also targets that you know you're going to meet is obviously, a, a, you know, a, an old political kind of game uh, and whether it means anything to the general public about whether these targets are met or not. Uh, I don't think most people know that uh, Glasgow has surpa surpassed its target of 30% carbon emissions in reduction by 2020 and they managed to do this in 2015. Of course they didn't meet the target of uh, bringing down um, child poverty or, or a huge range of other types of targets but this is one that they were able to meet but it largely had nothing to do with what the city of Glasgow did and a huge amount to do with the, the widespread adoption of renewable energy in Scotland. Um, so and as Ben described in the report this is this has been seen as the kind of low-hanging fruit so again you can use these kind of targets to to profess that you are making progress when actually it's a smokescreen. Um, the, the next 70% of the cuts that, that we, we need to make um, are, the, you know, are the crucial ones, but they're the ones that you can't just deliver without really changing the kind of paradigm within which you're working. Sorry, and the mute button is very near the slide, <laughs> the progressed slide button, so yeah, it makes it quite difficult. I'll move that across there, that's better. Um, so things like the emissions from the, the transport sector, one of the issues about how do you define even what uh, is the, the sort, of sort of carbon footprint of a city like Glasgow. So the transport sector, um, they've only marginally reduced the kind of outputs from 2006 to 18, um, and emissions from industry and commerce, which are seen as the largest sector actually rule for Glasgow actually rose in 2018. Um, while emissions from the domestic sector have fallen significantly from 2006, since 2006, again, that kind of figure of that drop off is starting to slow down. Um, 
uh, and with with issues around how people heat their heat their homes, um, issues around the the kind of in, insulation levels, etc., of of housing, uh, and also of the kind of the standards that the new housing is brought to. There's a huge amount of issues um, that, unfortunately most of the general public are not informed of and not knowledgeable of and it's one of the reasons why kind of organizations like air parents for the future we've got sam speaking for you tonight have got a a really important role in getting more and more people engaged and involved in the in the facts of these issues rather than the kind of green screen um so, so these 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 particular sectors um of transport and industry and commerce and the, and the domestic sector all create huge problems in terms of decarbonisation. Um, but again, what is not mentioned here is the consumption of a city like Glasgow. So, so much of what is consumed in Glasgow uh, is made uh, in other parts of the world or uh, food grown and brought over here. And uh, there are significant gaps in even this kind of concept of, of, of net zero. Um, so, really, when you start to look into these things, you just see more gaps than than actual substance. Um, the, the council implementation plan to tackle the climate emergency is, is full of reviews. So it's again, it's kicking the can down the road. It's feasibility study. It's pilots. It's look, we are in a climate emergency. We we have been doing this kind of thing and, and putting things off for decades. Uh, and now is the time to stop. And yet, still, the Climate Emergency Working Group, another, um, you know, potentially uh, useful approach. Actually, again, the the key and most critical ambitious policy recommendations have been watered watered down or left out entirely. And again, this has the has an, uh, another side effect, which people stop engaging because they think really what is the point I give up my time I try and get involved I try and make a difference and I, I don't have any any impact I don't have any ability to change the the way that in which the council and other kind of public bodies um, deals with these issues so oh Sandra's coming back in um, so what we're trying to do with the report is also to get people to can really think about the scale of the problem that we are we are address, we are being faced with. So, if we're going to insulate all four hundred and twenty eight thousand homes in Glasgow, which don't have a currently a, a C standard for energy efficient efficiency, it would require one hundred and thirty retrofits every day between the first of January twenty twenty two, which I don't think they've started, and the thirty first of December twenty thirty. Um, so we're all a huge task, which we could and we should have done at least 10 years ago, if not 20, uh, it's still not begun. And this cannot be a, a sort of private sector led market or orientated. There is not a market orientated response to this program. It needs the, the, the kind of leadership and the determination um, to make it happen through, through public uh, public works and through the, the, the public sector system. The green pin for investment, again, if you when you see those words, uh, you've got to always uh, be very cautious because really the green pin for investment is usually about how can um, businesses continue to make to, to make money and with a, with a city with the huge levels of inequality within a world with huge levels of inequality there still seems to be a complete willful blindness to the fact that these the systems that we are using uh, generate inequalities rather than reduce them so kind of ideas like the glasgow district heating network and the, the home energy retrofit program we need these to be not-for-profit uh, approaches. We need to be looking at setting up cooperatives. We need to be looking at ways in which we can create an economic uh, model which is not extractive um, but but sustainable and fair. Um, however, the, the city is still focused on basically selling off the city to the private sector and to 
hedge funds and investors and giving money to people like the Barclays Bank to locate their European headquarters in the financial sector. Um, this Glasgow's Green Deal is it's really, again, another hugely disappointing delivery plan for climate action. It's, it's got very little organisational and financial detail. Um, and it's quite clear that the, 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 the power around the table and the voices around the table are business voices, not community voices. Um, and we've seen this fail again and again. The um, PP, Triple P, the public private sector partnerships that built schools and, and oh, the disastrous building of hospitals, not just in Glasgow, but across Scotland. Uh, and the fact that we're still paying huge amounts for these for these buildings, just we're just refusing to learn from the mistakes of the past. Um, using public sector led approach would be much more cost effective because we can we can borrow much more cheaply from um, the public uh, the public purse than from private finance and yet still Glasgow has global loans to private banks in Germany and other places across the world which we're still paying high interest loans back to and we'll be paying them back into the middle of this century um, if not if not even further than that. The fact that we don't even really know that the, the new houses that are meant to be built in the city, which again are often for private profit rather than social housing. Uh, and we work closely with the uh, Claire Simmons at, uh, at Planning Democracy, who will be doing a, a kind of event for us uh, in, a, in, a, in a few months time around those kind of issues of, of land and planning. But all these things tie together in a, in a complex but toxic uh, situation which is really damaging uh, the potential future of, of, of ourselves and our children. Um, we, you, there are alternatives. We, we, there are things we can do that we're not doing uh, and there are plans that, that could effectively and we're arguing that these need to be brought in in place of these dysfunctional um, visions for the city. So one of those alternative policies would be a strict retrofit first, um, which uh, our, our friends at uh, the uh, uh, Architects for, for Climate Action Network have been promoting and uh, programmes to replace gas boilers with district heating systems. All these things can create employment uh, and can be monitored and implemented in ways which are much more efficient um, than through the kind of private sector approach. This idea of free public transport, we'll be showing you a short video from Great Glasgow Moving. So it's another area, a fully integrated free public transport system uh, and tough penalties or to discourage use of cars or other uh, policies that could be brought in effectively. Um, the, the, the idea of bringing things that things like a people's QE, the, the billions that have been that have been thrown um, away on quantitative easing, and we know that it's just massively increased the level of financial inequality because the the richest five percent have gained massively from this kind of spending, but most people aren't even aware of it. And at the same time, with the welfare uh, and public and spending on public services being cut. Um, huge amounts have been given to um, apply liquidity to the market, which has meant asset prices going through the roof and people um, with, often with a, uh, the, the bank accounts in the Virgin Islands and other tax havens making huge amounts of money. So what we're really looking at is, you know, things like wealth taxes uh, and restructuring the kind of local and income tax systems so that we can take the money from the people who can afford it uh, and bring in the and invest in the services that we need. This is the context that was uh, of some of the reports that was taken uh, 
being used as a background for the Greenwash report. This Glasgow Alchemy report is one of a series of four that we've done, uh, again, which goes on in more in depth about how public money is turned into private profit. Profit. We should remember that the, the latest report of the IPCC came out on, on Monday with more terrifying news um, about the reality of, of climate emergency. Um, we would recommend a, a range of, of different work that's going on. So there's ACAN's report, the Great Glasgow Moving, the, the Greenpeace work around Real Zero and the Friends of the Earth uh, International. Common Wheel have put forward many excellent recommendations and the, the, the retro first policies, there are alternatives out there and we need to put them in front of the people of the city. We've got some great feedback on, on this report. Um, the, the Professor David White, who um, wrote that the author of Ecocide, Kill the Corporation Before It Kills Up, Kills Us. I'm, every time I read that title, I say I must buy that book. Um, you know, has pointed out how important these the kind of issues being raised by Glasgow's Greenwash is. And what we're hoping is to try and get this out in front of more people and we're asking for your help to do that. Um, so, so I'm now delighted to uh, introduce a dear friend and someone who is a, a a tireless activist for the issues around the environment, uh, environment, and I'm really interested to to hear her um, views, not just on this report, but also to let us know about some of the work that she's been involved in. I'm just going to stop screen sharing just now so that we can invite Zarina to uh, come along. I don't know if we've any if there, if we've any time just before Zarina comes in. If there are any particular questions around the report which people would like to ask. If you're still awake, still awake out there. Hello. Just to say, we, we don't really have time at this stage. We're running okay. quite far behind. So just to say that if you have questions, we'll maybe bring them in after all of the speakers and things, and we'll have questions then. Excellent. OK, thank you very much, Tyona, for keeping us right. Um, so can we pop on speak, uh, speaker view and focus on Zarina and let her... Uh, Hi everybody and thank you for inviting me to come along and speak today um, and I'm just here just to, to to do a rant and raving is probably is probably the best way to describe it um, so one of the issues that I have with um, oh, the climate emergency and all the greenwashing that Glasgow is doing is the lack of clarity on and I think um, Mark hinted on this and is, is a people-centered approach, right? Nothing when it comes to like low, like looking at like net zero, low carbon, none of that actually connects to, well, how does that have an impact on us that are living in the city, right? And I think what, what is needed is this much more people-centered approach and not just looking at carbon emissions. I think the focus around carbon emission actually starts to distract why we're doing all this. Why are we working on climate change? Why are we trying to get a sustainable world? You know, it's so putting the planet and people at the heart of every action is needed. And that connection needs to be shown. And if we have that connection, then we have the buy-in from everybody. I think then people would buy in when, if we just keep on talking about carbon emissions, net zero, all of this terminology, which is so distant from the everyday person, they're not interested. They don't really care what's happening. And when I say they don't really care, I mean, they do care, everybody cares, but it's like, how do they care? How do they connect to it? What does it mean to them? How can they get involved? Um, how do they have an impact on them? People don't really see it. They don't really get it. They don't really feel it. They don't connect to it. So we really need to start looking at how these reports, how these strategies, how, impl how we implement things actually has an impact on people. That's their health, their well-being, their lifestyles, their, um, their economic um, positions. Um, so all of these issues, employment status, all of these things need to be connected to any action that's implemented when it comes to net zero or low carbon. And I just feel as if that whole 
part is just so missing. It's just not there. There's a whole void around it. And I think if Glasgow, I and mean, Glasgow's low, um, slogan is people make Glasgow. So where is all this people makes Glasgow when we look at reports like this? It's just so missing. And, and then if we start to look closer and we'll take a granular look at the actions. And as Mark said, that the, all of the actions in there are actually still creating a very divisive world, very divisive society. The people that are gonna benefit are the ones that are already in a position that they can benefit, financially benefit, um, economically benefit, um, social status benefit. There's so many different benefits, health benefits. So the people that are actually gonna, that are making the changes or can make changes or are in positions where, these um, targets make sense to them, right? Are the people that are going to benefit? And I just feel as if we're leaving so many people behind. We're not bringing anybody along with us, and that really worries me. And um, really concerns me. Um, and and I just look at at some of these reports, and I just it just saddens me, especially when we look at like how Glasgow has like now become this green city. And I'm looking at the green city thinking, which part of the U has become green? It just still looks the same to me. You know, it's still the same things. And um, seeing that, mind you, I went past a bus depot on my way here to my daughter's house and the bus depot did have a lot of electric charging points. So um, there must be a fleet of electric buses, but again, it, it, for me, it's like, well, who's paying for these electric buses? Who's benefiting? At the, at, you know, it's, it goes back to that private sector investment. We really do need to move away from the private sector investment and start looking at public sector um, ownership. Um, and I am 100% behind what the, the um, Green Water Report is saying about public sector ownership. Um, and I do think that will bring society more at an equal level of foot and, um, and start attacking some of the social justice issues. And I think climate change really does need to be looking at climate justice in terms of social justice. And how do we tackle climate change so that it doesn't have further impacts or you know, um, further negative impacts on different social inequalities? Um, and I, at the moment, I really struggle to see how any action climate emergency reports action strategies from the city or from from the government are actually doing that or actually stating that they're not even stating it never mind actually doing it um so that's probably where i'm where i'm interested in and to see how can we start making a little bit more headway so that everybody is is involved in creating a better sustainable city that belongs to everybody and um, that they feel that it's a part of their city, it's a part of them. So even like thinking about like retrofitting and if, if it keeps going out to public sector bodies and like Mark said, this has been going on for the last 15 to 20 years. They're talking about retrofitting this, the, all the housing stock in Scotland, um, but it keeps going out to private sector and people are interested they don't want to line the pockets of private companies. So they're not going to invest in that money and uh, invest in their homes in the same way as if it was public sector money. And they could see the benefit of where that money's going to, how that money's being spent. And then that brings me to accountability, right? Accountability, I think, has to be much more transparent. Where does our money, our public sector money go? And I think so many of us don't know where that goes. They have no idea. And they keep getting told it goes on your council tax. You pay council tax and it goes on council services. But yet I live in East Ayrshire and I know how little services we have in East Ayrshire. I would say 80% of the libraries are closed. We have very little leisure services. We have... Um, we have huge problems with litter, as, as many places do. Um, we have potholes in all the roads. We can't get access to GP services now. We can't get access to any healthcare now. I mean, my daughter rang up the GP the other day and the GP even said to her, if you want a quicker appointment, go private. That's terrible. I mean, I'm, and I'm we're hearing this again <laughs> and again from many people. 
anything can we pay in council tax and the amount of council tax that we pay is just ridiculous but yet there's no accountability of where our money is going um, i need to stop you there serena yeah. because i again huge issues that you're bringing up um but thank you very much that's really helpful and i want to bring sam in now who's been popping in and out of the meeting but i hope he's going to be able to to uh, um give us the, the the perspective of parents for the future but thank you very much to i'll be looking forward to having you involved in the, the breakout rooms thank you thank you mark and thank you zarina yes yeah, thanks everybody um hopefully yeah my connectivity is appalling so forgive me if i vanish um yes um i'm sam parents of future was formed basically by concerned parents and carers to support um the, the friday climate strikers um when we see our children st striking from school to raise awareness of the climate catastrophe and leaving it to them is not an option for many parents around around the country around the city around the world so parents of future was support formed to support those children and to support other parents who have similar anxieties about the climate emergency and want to join together to um actively trying to change things for the better in solidarity with families and individuals around the world, especially in the global south, because they've been most affected by it and have done the least to cause climate change. Um, I, I'm, I'm very appreciative of what Sane have done with in drawing attention to um, Glasgow's attempt to portray itself as dealing with the climate emergency. It's declared a climate emergency. A lot of People have done that. A lot of organisations have done that, but that doesn't mean that you're actually dealing with it in a way that is just, fair, inclusive, and will produce um, the, the low carbon results and the and the reductions in equality that are desperately needed. Um, I don't know if you want to know about a little bit of what Parents for Future does. We campaigned in the run up to COP to draw attention to. The, the fears of a lot of children. We worked with, with a number of artists to produce work that children could respond to. We produced education packs that were um, welcomed actually by the uh, education departments across the city and were put into every school and formed lesson plans that children could uh, produce work and which was exhibited in community centers and community facilities around the city. Um, which do attention to the fears of the children, the fears of their carers, and the need to act, to take action, to, to deliver a just and sustainable future for everybody. This year, we're focusing on air pollution as one of our main campaigns, which ties in beautifully, I think, with some of the, the research that has been done by Sane um, when, when we're talking about Glasgow's greenwash and the issue of so the district heating systems sounds like a great idea um will it be publicly funded yes will it will all that money go to private companies yes probably um which is a terrible travesty if you look at actually the mechanics of it too i gather that a lot of the district heating systems will either be powered by biomass which is not sustainable though we're told it's sustainable but if you chop down a tree now and burn it then if you if you plant a tree, it will take 40 years to grow to this sufficient level to, to extract the carbon from the atmosphere. But we don't have 40 years, we need to act now and we need to start reducing carbon drastically now. I think um, that uh, the Southside district heat system is gonna be powered by Palmer D, which calls itself a recycling and green energy center. And it's not, it's gonna be burning rubbish, um, incinerators, deemed to be a green energy source because they burn the stuff we throw away. So you can call it a green energy source and you can call it a renewable energy source and it's renewable because we will keep consuming and we will keep throwing stuff away and we will burn it. Um, that is not remotely sustainable, yet it's that, that is how it's portrayed. As far as I'm aware, I mean, I'd love to some, somebody to come forward and say, no, 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 you've got that all wrong, we're going to power it. Uh, through renewable, genuine re renewable means. But as far as I can tell, we're not. Um, 
That's <laughs> part, part of the problem, Sam, is the, uh, the, yeah, the more that you know about these things, the, wor the worse the situation actually gets. Yeah, yeah I'm uh, sorry, have I taken things down? Downhill. Um, <laughs> Don't worry, they were they were pretty much going that direction anyway. It's definitely not your fault. Uh, I just wanted to to pause you there because I've got we've got a little video from um, the GU, the Great Glasgow Moving um, organisation that have been you know sort of headed up by Ellie Harrison who might be joining us later. Um, but I've blathered on so long in that presentation that I've uh, I'm sucking up our time for our for our working groups. So if it's okay with you, Sam, I'll put pop this little video on uh, and let us all watch. I'll, I'll share the screen again, and then we'll be straight into our um, breakout rooms, and we will be back on schedule. But thank you very much for bringing in just another level, and both to, to you and to Zarina for seeing the kind of levels of complexity that we're, we're, we're trying to engage with around these issues. So thank you very much. I'm, I'm now going to go back to the to the uh, slideshow. You can see I've been already looking at uh, that really interesting um, piece of information that was shared with us. And I'm going to, sorry, this is me. That was our one politician that has appeared. So now we're going to just watch this short video um, from the, the grassroots public transport campaign founded in 2016. And they, who've been doing a great job of trying to get the issue about transport out there. Oh, damn. If I'd only seen that before. Right, I don't want, I want to skip the ads, thank you.
fantastic little video there. I think you you'll you agree. Um, oh, I thought. Thank you. I'm just going to say that I'm just going to uh, end the recording now before we head into our breakout rooms. Thank you very much for uh, for taking part tonight, and yeah, looking forward to continuing on with the rest of it.